Hi, I'm Saab Johal, and today I'm going to be telling you about my experience of using the Insta360 Go for over six months now. Are there any real differences between what I thought after just one month and what I think now? Let me tell you this straight off the bat. I've used this camera far more than I thought I was going to. So I bought this camera when it first came out and ordered it from AliExpress in China. That was back in September 2019. It arrived so I could use it in New Zealand just before I headed over to the UK where I used it in England and in Wales too and as well as the stopover points in the USA and back through China where I lost a lot of footage because of how the Insta360 GO didn't handle the time zone changes very well at all. You can find out more about that if you watch this video here somewhere, uh, and it's also linked in the description. And since I've been back, I've made numerous videos showing you how I captured videos in all these places in vlogs set to music and also how to use the Insta360 GO too. And I made lots of videos like that. You can find them on my channel. Okay, enough. Let me run through the cons of my one month later review and see how I feel about them now. First off, I thought it was slippery to hold. Yes, it's still slippery to hold, but you kind of get used to it. It's still very hard to prise out of the pivot mount, but I kind of prepare for that now when I know I'm going to use the go. Next is the auto sync flash cut to music. This really is a gimmicky feature. If you're just going to use it for social media posts or you're just starting out, then it's a nice feature to have, but it gets old really quickly. I think I've maybe used it maybe three or four times since I did my one month review. That's it. It needs an update Insta360 desperately. Next up is the fisheye point of view. You know what? This just didn't bother me at all. Just bear it in mind if you're going to get close to objects and they'll get kind of warped out of shape. But to be honest, I just chose my shots more carefully so that if I didn't want that effect, I would shoot a little further away or choose a different kind of shot. Really isn't a deal breaker anymore. But the thing that still really infuriates me is that if you're not holding it just right, your fingers appear in the footage. And that's still very annoying, even if you try to select the option in the settings to try to minimize that effect. All right, next up in my concerns list and my one month later review was video quality. Now, accepting that this really looks like a kind of upscaled 720p, it is what it is. And I think it's actually acceptable. It's by no means professional quality, but it's great for YouTube and a fantastic option for b-roll and behind the scenes kind of footage and i've seen quite a few people using it in that way and also presenting it in a picture in picture kind of way i think that that works for explainer videos and other uses too now the jelly like effect that you get is still a problem and it doesn't look like it's something that can be addressed that easily because well insta360 haven't done that but what insta360 have done is introduce the color plus option when exporting if you're using the go on ios at least i think they're still to release this on android but i can't be sure i'm sure you'll let me know in the comments but i do like to use color plus but i've also actually noticed that i've started using it less more recently now why is that because yes it boosts the outputs like saturation clarity and structure but it has a a certain look and I've been finding it a little bit over the top lately. I'd like for there to be a slider setting so that you can select the intensity of the color plus rather than a simple binary on or off. It would also be good to have a preview setting so I can get a clue of what it's gonna look like before I export the video. So I need an intensity or an opacity setting as well as a preview option. I'd like both of those please, Insta360, and that would really help. Okay, it's unavoidable now. I've got to talk about the biggest annoyance of the go. It was after one month and it still is now the button. The button is still the worst thing about the Go and it's still totally infuriating. The number of times I thought I was capturing video when all I got was a photo of my fingers has now risen to the billions. I know you can change the way that the button presses links to various functions of the camera like hyperlapse and slow motion but to me there is something fundamentally flawed with how a simple video capture is implemented. It just 
does not work reliably. This happened again last week when I was recording my video and cinematic footage tips for the Go. You can see that linked at the end of this video. It just doesn't work as it should, especially if you've got it mounted on the pendant around your neck or the mount attached to a hat. The chances of feeling any of the haptic feedback are slim to none. And unfortunately, this is a hardware issue. I can't see a way to fix this with software. So we're kind of stuck with it. If you've got any ideas, I'd love to hear them. Apart from, you know, press it harder, that doesn't work, or only use it in certain ways, that's fine, but it does limit the capability of what the Go is supposed to be able to do, which kind of sucks. Okay, now we've got that big no out of the way, how has the Go surprised me in good ways? Well, what I found myself using quite a lot is the slow motion function, which I've seen very few people talking about. I think it actually produces some pretty good results. Yes, the resolution isn't brilliant, but it does enable you to get some interesting 100 frames per second footage pretty easily on a device that you could be wearing and just have handy. <laughs> I've also been using the Go in the pivot mount more than I thought I would. Whether it's on my scooter doing a hyperlapse or on the end of a small and collapsible 1X selfie pole to enable me to get a low view or even a high view. The fact that I can get stabilized footage really easily is something that I've used quite a lot. And the other thing that's been really good about it is the light weatherproofing that the Go has. If anything, this has been the reason why I've used this a lot more than I thought I was going to. In some patches of really rubbish weather going on for days, it's perfect to be able to capture short bursts of footage when I can't use my One X or I don't want to get my phone out. I can wear it on a pendant, on a hike, open my jacket quickly, grab some footage, wipe the lens, and then put it back on my pendant, zip up my coat, and move on. What else? Well, the fact that it is handy. If I'm wearing it on the hat clip or the pendant, it's just there. I get footage and I put it away. Don't underestimate how much quicker this can be than getting out your phone out of your pocket. On the downside, it's less reliable than getting your phone out of your pocket because it doesn't have a screen and because that button. Now the docking cradle on how well it works, the hyperlapse quality, and also the flow state stabilization. All these remain absolutely great and very good reasons to keep using this little beast of a camera. It really does do the basic jobs very well indeed. Not brilliantly, but well. And the microphone still is one of the best you'll find in a device this size, although it is still a bit on the quiet side. That hasn't been updated at all. I've used the continuous interval mode quite a bit recently when out and about. I think this is underused by people and perhaps you don't know about it. So check out this video that I've put in the description as well and make sure you give it a try. I think you might be surprised about how useful it can be. So in summary, six months later, I'm using this camera when I'm going out shooting as part of my kit. Its number one top feature, like I said in my one month review, remains its versatility. It does pretty much everything, either quite well or very well, but none of them brilliantly. It's not my daily camera. My iPhone 11 Pro Max has taken that place, and that's very, very hard to beat, and I may make a video about how I use that soon. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in in the comments below. But back to the go. As part of my toolkit, when I go out for the day with the intention of shooting, or if I'm on a day out with the kids and I know I'll be moving around a lot with them, the Insta360 Go pretty much is the ideal all-round camera. And it's so light, you can almost forget you're wearing it. And actually, sometimes I do forget that I'm wearing it. It's only when somebody asks me what it is and am I recording them, can I stop it please, that I remember that I'm wearing it at all. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have found it useful, please give it a like, consider subscribing and hit that notifications bell to make sure you don't miss out. I'd love to see you back here again soon. Here's some more videos of mine that you might find interesting. Please take a look around and thanks for watching again. Cheers and go well.